Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the comment video. We've known that NVIDIA have had their fingers in the virtual reality pie for some time. However, NVIDIA are working alongside Stanford University to create a new generation of virtual reality headsets that will be, theoretically, in shops by 2018. You heard that right, a new generation of virtual reality headsets. We don't even seem to have this generation quite yet, but anyway. One of the big problems with virtual reality as it stands is rather simple and it's present in any current generation virtual reality headset and it's weird I have to actually say current generation but there you go. That is rather simply that motion sickness is pretty prevalent. Now your sensitivity to it may vary but objects which are particularly close to the screen, in other words closer to you, are much more likely to cause the issue. And there is a lot of research and reasoning behind that, but the basic gist is that it's very hard for your eye and brain to deal with the forced focusing of current generation headsets, and that's a really big problem. In fact, the senior director of research at NVIDIA says it's quite like this. This is because of the virgin's accommodation conflict, which is how much the lenses of your eye has to change to bring sharp focus to your retina. Thus, in collaboration once again with Stanford, NVIDIA asked Stanford to help, a new technology has been born by the name of Near Eye Light Field. So how does it work? Well, rather simply, it does away with the standard 2D images which both eyes receive. So let's say for the sake of argument, one eye will receive one 2D image, the other eye will receive another 2D image, and Bob's your uncle. Now, that obviously has limitations, but the new generation of technology expands on that by quite literally doubling the number of images each eye receives. Obviously, there's a backlight, and then you have an LCD, followed by a spacer, and then another LCD. Then, obviously, you've got the houses, and the um, housing, rather, and then the lenses itself. The basic gist will be that your body will be able to much more naturally, your body, your eyes rather, will more, much more naturally be able to set focus between the various objects. Both of these LCDs are separated around five millimeters, so it's, it's rather titchy, and they will send each eye a 4D light field. Now, currently the resolution of the screen is kind of low. It's only 1280 by 800, so just over 720p, but, because they are stacking the screen resolution, it does remain pretty much the same. But, on top of that, the HMD works by splitting the screen quite literally in two halves, which means that the resolution is pretty pathetic. It's only 640 by 800. And I immediately know many of you are thinking, oh my god, that is absolutely terrible. That is a travesty. That is tragic. You cannot have that. And you're right, of course. However, at the moment, it is literally just a proof of concept. They are just testing it. It is purely a prototype. And therefore, eventually, we will see much better LCD panel technology. And at the moment, they are just using it to demonstrate how it will work. Obviously, in the future, we might see, say, 1080p screens or what have you. As you can imagine, this will require quite the GPU comp computational um, farm to be able to run. It will probably be quite expensive in terms of GPU resources. But, unfortunately, we are in this rather weird stage at the moment with virtual reality. And this is, in my opinion anyway, present whether you're running on PC, whether you're running console, whether you're running up from your smartphone watch. Maybe one of those isn't too realistic. But still... And that is, quite simply, it's kind of early in the technology. And what I mean by that, I don't just mean that the hardware, like the raw GPU power or anything like that. I'm actually talking about the actual hardware. We're talking a bit about things such as the weight of the headset is kind of a big deal. They have made improvements on it, but it's still kind of clunky. Um, audio has definitely been improved, but it still doesn't feel quite natural at the moment it still feels a little off and it's even down to things such as say your movement and what I mean by that is one of the the key selling points of virtual reality is that if you look to the left 
you expect the image to move to the left, and of course it does, but there are some problems. Inherently, it's due to latency. Once again, that's something they are working on. Um, both NVIDIA and AMD are working on it. We all know that Liquid VR, for example, from AMD uses the GPUs, uh, um, GPUs Ace, Ace, yeah, it's quite literally Aces, Aces, yeah, asynchronous compute engines because it would be yeah, multiple Aces, which would you know intersplice those computate those actual calculations of you know adjusting the view that type of thing, and it intersplices it with typical graphics workloads, and in the video doing much the same. However, it is still really quite early. And ultimately, the developers will need to learn this technology themselves and figure out the best way to utilize it. And eventually, of course, there will be some standards which start falling into place for the industry, and there already are, but it's kind of loose at the moment. It's like a wild west. Everyone's trying to figure out how it works, what's the best way to do it, what technologies are going to be the best to implement. And then, of course, Let's say this is Generation 1, what's going to happen with Generation 2, Generation 3, Generation 4? And in my mind, it's going to be like, let's call it Generation 2, which I'm assuming it will, probably will be about 2018 Generation 2. When that starts popping up, then we'll probably have really good solid technology. At the moment, it's still kind of early. I could point it to something like the LCD panels of old. You might remember those, like the really original LCDs where people were buying them and this is when people were coming off of the CRTs and moving towards LCDs. True story, quick uh, segue, quick digression. Back then I used to play a lot of Counter-Strike, a lot of FPS, a lot of PC gaming as a whole to be honest with you and I you know I saw a friend's LCD and this is back when like 19 inch LCDs were massive. Everyone was like oh my god you've got a 19 inch display and I tried it and you could just tell that it was really cool technology, you know, the fact it was so thin, the fact it weighed, well, relatively light compared to, you know, the 20 inch CRT that I had basically crushing my desk, but I noticed immediately the latency, I immediately noticed the crappy colour reproduction, and eventually, a couple of years later, I took the plunge, well, maybe about 18 months later, took the plunge, bought an LCD, but I still didn't play Counter-Strike or anything that really required quick reflexes, I guess you could say, on that screen. Instead, I just used it for other stuff because it was still quite nice and it saved desktop space and, you know, having two large CRT monitors is a bit of a problem. Now, of course, we're starting to move towards other technologies like back in the day, while the Wild West was definitely 3D technology, where one company would go one way, another company would go another way, and it's just kind of how it is. Like between quads, everyone remember the quads where for a while everyone thought that the industry, the graphics technology would be using quads? It almost did, in fact. I mean, it didn't quite happen. But anyway, that's a bit of a digression. Moving back into this, NVIDIA are working rather heavily on GPU technology which is going to support this. I've just mentioned AMD obviously are working on Liquid VR. NVIDIA are have uh, VR Direct which is going to be I guess you could say part and parcel of Gameworks because obviously NVIDIA have their thing. So it's, it's going to be kind of a cool technology in my opinion anyway. But just to, just to round it off, there have been a couple of delays over the last couple of days regarding videos. Now I want to just get into this because I'm not, I've had, had a couple of people asking like, what's happened with the technical analysis. Well, basically, it's down to a screw up of software. Um, I got kind of far on a few projects because I was working on the two major technical analysis and another one. And what effectively happened was that the project sequences died. I have no idea what happened. Basically, I closed Adobe Premiere, reopened them to do the video editing because I've got the results. I get the results with different programs, but the actual editing that I used to put the whole thing together, the project file for some reason of both the Tomb Raider and Call of Duty has been damaged. So I've managed to get to an older state because there's auto saves. But it kind of sucks, because basically this weekend was supposed to be both Tomb Raider and Call of Duty. Unfortunately, that just hasn't happened. 
So I'm almost back to where I was on Tomb Raider, which is good, but yeah, it wasn't ideal times. There was a lot of rage and a lot of tears, but it is what it is. Fortunately, it hasn't really affected anything else. It's not affected, say, Let's Plays or anything like that, but the actual raw analysis stuff, it's really screwed up because, you know, you even make notes, you do like specific fades or audio or whatever. So uh, even some of the raw files, you know, some of the, the composites have been absolutely destroyed and I've tried reopening them, I've tried doing everything, clearing the cache, all of the normal fixes and it definitely is the project file. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there. A bit of a a bit of an odd one. All I all I saw that was Adobe Premiere was like, nope, I'm just gonna crash randomly and you know, you just don't think anything of it, you close it, try to reopen it, and the sequence is just absolutely busted. I'm going to assume it was doing an autosave, and it just happened to coincide with the crash. Oh well, these things happen. But, just thought I'd let you all know. But, as I said, Tomb Raider will be over the next couple of days. I'm almost back to where I was. And to be honest, I also wanted to do a little bit more in-depth than we normally do. Like, go even further and try a few other things out. So it kind of worked out, because... I actually found out a couple of different things I hadn't noticed before. Which, you know, sometimes these things happen. But, for now, I'm going to let you all go. Hopefully you've had a good day. Take care. Bye for now.